G'day. What I want to talk about in this video is units in Equation Editor. With some units, such as meters per second, you may have written, written as m slash s in the past. Now in paper this is fine, but in Equation Editor this has the annoying tendency to do that. So if you had, for example, uh, 35 meters per second, you end up with meters on the top line and second on the bottom. It's not really ideal. You could use the fraction section here, so you could put 35 meters per second, but what I'm going to suggest you do is not use that. I mean, if, as I said, if you want to, you can, but that's a bit slow. I prefer to say meters dot seconds to the power negative one, because that way I don't have to use the ribbon. Uh, by not using the ribbon, I'm cutting down time, and this becomes more helpful when you have to write out uh, this sort of equation repeatedly. That's, in essence, the basic point I wanted to get across here. Um, the rest of this video, I'm going to show a few more examples of units, but I won't actually be talking about specifically equation editor anymore. I just want to sell you on the idea of thinking about units in a certain way, because it helps you as engineers to think in this certain way. So the, the point I want to make here is that some units, for example, um, one newton, is one kilogram meter per second squared. If you think about the formula F equals MA, it's obvious that F is in newtons, and we have mass in kilograms, and acceleration in meters per second squared. So when we multiply this all out, we multiply kilograms by meters per second squared, we get the unit newtons, which is equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared. To try and illustrate the point I'm going for here, let's try the example of Look at the equation S equals VT, where S is displacement, V is velocity, and T equals time. You probably would have encountered this equation somewhere in high school. You may have seen it take the form S equals V naught T plus a half AT squared. But we're considering the case where acceleration is zero. Also, since acceleration is zero, we don't need the naught on V. The naught, by the way, just stands for initial. And that's a, a subscript that will be used a lot in engineering. In the normal form of this equation, you might have velocity in meters per second and time in seconds. So the example uh, V equals 10 meters per second and T equals know, 5 seconds. Neatly works out to show that S equals 10 times 5 and we have meters per second times seconds to just get an answer in 50 meters. Pretty straightforward. We get a bit more complicated when we start to look at different units. So if, for example, instead of the equation just presented here, I have something more like velocity, is it 36 kilometers, uh, kilometers per hour, kilometers per hour, um, and we have time at, say, 30 seconds. The cancellation that occurred before, if I have S in this case, it's going to be 36 kilometers per hour. The other thing is with equation editor, if you are writing out your equations, you don't have to write out all the little bits over and over again. You can copy and paste. Um, and oh, for anyone who was interested as well, the, the little cross is slash times. So that'll put a little cross in there. I think that makes your equations look really nice. Okay, so then we have 30 seconds. So as I said, the cancellation where seconds multiplied by seconds to neutralize that answer didn't work. If we just multiplied this out, the units for this would be kilometers per hour seconds. This isn't very this isn't a very handy answer for us. But the point I want to get across is that if you're thinking in units, if you're always thinking about the units that you're using in equations, a very easy solution to this problem uh, arises. Suppose you wanted to get an answer in kilometers for this displacement. So we want to work out what our displacement is somewhere in kilometers. Um, if this were algebraic terms, if you wanted to cancel out h to the negative one and s, you'd multiply the equation by h, s to the negative 1. This is, these obviously aren't just algebraic terms. They are, in fact, standing for units. And h, s to the negative 1 is meaningful. It means hours per second. How many hours are there in a given second? We know how many seconds there are per, an, per hour, which is 3,600. Um, we're looking for the reciprocal. So I'm just going to write 1 on 3,600. That is to say, there is 1, 1 of an hour in every second. So if we multiply this equation, kilometers in hours per second, by h s to the negative 1, we end up with 1080 worked out to be divided by 3600. This is, of course, kilometer per hour seconds multiplied by um, 
hours per second. And the last terms, all of this stuff here, cancels out. What we're left with is an answer in kilometres, 0 0.3. 0 0.3 kilometres. So that's a reasonably satisfying answer. Now, of course, the, the K in scientific units just stands for kilo. All that means is uh, K is 1,000. So if we wanted to just get an answer in straight metres, we would have F is equal to 0 0.3 times 1,000 is equal to quite simply 300 metres. So in scientific notation, if we were to write 3 times 10 to the 2, 3 times 100 metres, um, because we have the unit kilo that we know quite well, uh, or rather the, the prefix kilo, I should say. Um, it might be more convenient for us to say 0 0.3 times 10 to the 3 metres, since we know that 10 to the 3 is equal to kilo, and then we can shorten our answer to 0 0.3 kilo metres. Okay, so what I've done is I've brought up the, our old friend the reference buckling moment, and below it, what I've replaced it with is what all the units represent. Things like pi, they don't have any units to them, they just cancel out. So you can see E is modulus of elasticity, measured in megapascals. IY is the second moment of area in millimetres to the four. LE is the effective length in millimetres, which is squared, so we've got millimetres squared. Um, shear constant, megapascals, torsional constant for the beam, millimetres to the four there. I've left this term, IW, out. Because I want to show that by thinking in millimetres, we can determine which one of these possible units um, IW should be in. Now you might wonder what the value of this is. If you're in, in an exam or if you're um, in future trying to recall from memory the particular components of some function, giving a dimensional analysis, thinking about the formula in terms of its dimensions, will enable you to figure out which units to use and will tell you if you've made any mistakes. It, the thing I'm trying to teach you here can't tell you with certainty that your formula is correct but it can tell you with certainty if the formula you've assumed is incorrect. The first example I've brought up, the uh, S equals B naught T naught T plus a half A T squared. As I said, we can think about this as being in terms of metres, and this bit over here is being in terms of metres as well. Why? Acceleration is in metres per second squared, or metres per second per second, if you prefer that terminology, and time is in seconds. So we've got meters per second per second multiplied by seconds multiplied by seconds. So we get an answer in meters. In other words, what I'm saying here is we've got meters and we're adding to that meters. We can only add equivalent units. You can multiply units together and then you get combinations of units. But you can only add things if they're precisely the same unit. So up in this example, we have an addition sign here. The gj is added to whatever's in the brackets up here. So we know that the same units have to be here as are represented in here. Now again, because this is an equation editor, and because I'm going to find it helpful for my own thinking uh, to bring this out, I'm going to take out a portion of this equation so I can play with it. Now what have I got here? Uh, megapascals in this equation, yeah, I'll, I'll cancel that, and I'll cancel out that one too. Now I've got millimetres to the 4 is being added to IW, and these, these are equivalent, so they're going to have to be the same. So millimetres to the 4 is going to have to somehow become IW, or more precisely, IW I'm hoping that it's, it's getting pretty clear that this millimetres on the bottom line, if I multiply that out over here, it tells me that the units IW should be in are millimetres to the 6. And in fact, this is true. Um, if you were to look up the table and see what IW stands for, uh, which is, has the units millimetres to the 6. Uh, all right, so now I've replaced um, IW with millimetres to the 6 so that we can start cancelling some things. And up until now, I've told you this is the reference buckling moment equation, but is it really a moment? Uh, why is it that, that we call it that? Well, we can do a dimensional analysis and work this sort of thing out. Um, I can take this top line, so I'm going to get rid of this millimetres squared down there. That's going to be, become millimetres um, squared in the top line. So I'll cut that, delete that, paste again, and change that to 2. I'm sorry if that was too fast, but hopefully if you can rewatch that, you'll get the idea of what's going on. I'll do the same thing here. I've got megapascals in the top line, um, and the millimetres squared is going to make this a uh, millimetres to the 4. So I'll cut that, get rid of that, and change the 6 to a 4. Right, now megapascals times millimetres to the 4 plus megapascals times millimetres to the 4. In terms of our dimensional analysis, this is equivalent. That's not going to tell us anything else about the units. All we're doing is some addition there. So I can actually delete that part. Right, now I've got 
megapascals times millimeters squared um, times megapascals times millimeters to the four. It might be prudent at this point to expand megapascals and see what's going on inside a megapascal. So one pascal, one PA, is equal to one newton per meter squared. The prefix m, mega, is 10 to the 6, and this happens to be the same conversion rate between meters squared and millimeters squared. Um, we have times 10 to the 6 there. If you think about it, there's a thousand millimeters in a meter. If you would multiply 1,000 millimeters by 1,000 millimeters, or one meter by one meter, you get one million millimeters squared. So yeah, one square meter is one million millimeters squared. So yeah, getting back to Pascal's, we'll expand this out, and I can get rid of, I can treat that mega 10 to the 6 um, as just being the same as millimeters squared. So instead of meters squared here, I'm going to make this millimeters squared, and say that one mega Pascal is equal to one um, newton millimeter squared. This is, um, oh, sorry, per millimeter squared. This is quite true. Okay, so replacing all of the um, replacing all of the terms that have megapascal with newton per millimeter squared. What we're left with, we've got in here, oh, per millimeter squared times millimeter squared cancels, and then we've got millimeters oh, per millimeter squared times millimeters to the four. So what we're left with here is newton millimeters, uh, newton millimeter squared. So this is equivalent to the square root of newton squared times millimeters squared. And if we take the square root, we now end up with newton millimeters. So indeed, a force times a distance. Newton is a measurement of force. Millimeter is a measurement of distance. We have a force times a distance. And a force times a distance is a moment. This is actually an equation for a, a, a moment of some description. It might not be meaningful in uh, the sense of its true application to the beam, uh, but we are well within our rights to call the reference buffering moment. All right, for those of you who have watched to the end, I want to thank you for having faith that I wasn't just uh, crapping along. Yeah, th this, this stuff I'm teaching, look, it, it might seem a bit uh, complicated right at the start, and yeah, it is. It's, it's a reasonably complicated idea. Um, but you've got a long time to get into the habit of this. You've got years of, of practicing um, engineering before you have to apply these skills. And I hope I've, I've demonstrated at least some of the value that this line of reasoning can give. Um, it, it does help you to determine if you've made a mistake in one of your assumptions. It can't tell you for certain if your formula is correct, because as I pointed out with the, the pi before, if you had omitted the, the pi's from this equation, um, the units unit analysis would have still said it was all okay. Um, so as I said, it, it can't tell you with certainty that you're using the right formula. But it can tell you if you made an incorrect assumption about some of the units to use, and it can tell you what answer you're, you're getting your units in. Um, oh, incidentally as well, Newton millimeters, um, there's a thousand millimeters in a meter, so I can change that to um, kilometers, or rather I'll put in the kilo out the front, so we now have kilonewton meters, which should be the format you're familiar with. Right, I hope that's been helpful.